Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am Kitagawa with Kyoto University. Hey, I am at Institute for Integrated Soil Material Sciences of this university, uh, which is uh, a short name as ICMS. Uh, this is the title of my talk uh, about such a material with such a, a skeletal skull structure. Uh, I have three parts as I go along. Uh, part one is about our world, where we live. Second is how my science uh, has developed, uh, what is the background, and the third is what those materials can do. You know, in the 19th century, we saw industrial revolution in the United Kingdom. Uh, we came to consume a lot of energy uh, uh, from that time on, and we have built such a social structure of consuming enormous amount of energy. And we uh, first used uh, coal as a resource for fuel. In the 20th century, it was replaced by petroleum, largely. Uh, what about the 21st century? Uh, that's gas. So it's just natural gas. What does it mean? Solids. It can be left they are as they are, but for a liquid, we need a container to store. What about gas? We need a more precise and more uh, uh, a strong container. And so the technology has moved on from something simple to more complicated and difficult to handle. Uh, however, a coal and a natural gas or petroleum will uh, uh, no longer be there. It has a certain limit. But we have a lot of uh, gases around us. Uh, this shows uh, the population over uh, years and uh, advanced countries are shown in purple and developing countries in yellow and we are here. Uh, now advanced countries uh, population remain more or less the same but the population is increasing in the developing world. Uh, several decades ago uh, advanced countries I uh, began to consume a lot of energy, resources, food and water. We were almost monopolizing all of those resources. Um, however, it's now very difficult to share those resources. Each nation is exerting their nationalism uh, to have a larger share of such natural resources. Now, according to this uh, paper, um, uh, the population in the near future, 2100, is going to be 12.3 billion. And more recently, the United Nations uh, did the same kind of analysis. In 2050, that will be 9.8 billion. And the 2100, again, over 10 billion. Uh, so population is uh, increasing enormously. Then what can we do about this? Uh, here uh, you can see uh, hydrogen, oxygen, all of those uh, more or less a uh, simple uh, molecule. Uh, uh, molecule are made up of a few atoms. In uh, usual circumstances, other than water, they are in uh, the uh, gas phase. Uh, and they all contain uh, the atoms, we are, with elements we are necessary, uh, environment, natural resources, energy, and for human life. All of those elements are essential for all of those aspects. Uh, this is uh, the SDG, Sustainable Development Goal, uh, by United Nations toward 2030. Uh, there are 17 goals, uh, food, health, water, energy, uh, industrial uh, innovations, or rather industrial uh, promotion and sustainability, uh, climate, and water. Uh, uh, from uh, ocean and uh, rivers and life on our land. Uh, all of those are related to science and engineering. Otherwise, we are not able to resolve uh, the issues. And also chemistry. My field is essential uh, to solve those uh, problems. Now, uh, petroleum has been producing so many useful things around us, uh, energy uh, as well. Um, they have been indispensable for us, but what happens when we have no uh, petroleum any longer? Then we might have to use the more ubiquitous resources uh, to replace petroleum as a resource for products. Uh, they are ubiquitous, so there is no competition for uh, them in a nationalistic way. But actually, uh, those uh, gases can be easily mixed and diffused and very low in concentration and invisible, very hard to handle. Uh, in order to use them uh, more 
predictably we need a first materials by so doing we are able to operate those uh, gases under mild conditions low energy uh, room temperature low pressure and low concentration then how can we handle gases first we need to separate them and then store and convert it to useful materials. All three functions are necessary for us to use the gases for our society effectively and usefully. Now about the porous materials, looking back, actually um, uh, 2,500 uh, years ago, it was already used in papyrus, um, for instance, uh, for medical applications and purification uh, according to the papyrus. So porous materials uh, had such a long history and had been useful for human life and in 18th century, uh, zeolite was uh, discovered and further advancement was made in zeolite, which is uh, inorganic, uh, which made a great advancement in the field of petrochemical industry. But in order to resolve the issues I mentioned earlier, they are not enough. Uh, so we have to uh, be able to find a technology um, to uh, operate uh, those materials with the low energy, uh, and we need a porous material to recognize to capture, to separate, store, and condense them. And we discovered the ones uh, I showed you, such as the MOF and PCPs 20 years ago. Now, a pause. In the history, uh, can we find such a uh, Chinese character? Uh, actually, 2,000 years ago already in China, uh, uh, a concept of poor and that Chinese character uh, were in existence. So it was actually activated uh, carbon, but our concept was already uh, there about pores, and we already had a Chinese character uh, for porous materials. So porous materials have always been around us. Then uh, what about this chemistry of uh, small spaces uh, uh, found in porous materials? When I was a student, I read the Chuan Tzu, and uh, I was impressed by this particular uh, passage. Uh, all people, everyone knows uh, the usefulness of uh, the useful, but no one knows the usefulness of the useless. But actually, uh, there is a utility of the useless. Um, uh, uh, already in the fourth century BC, there was such a great philosopher uh, who gave us such an important insight. And in Kyoto University, we are encouraged to do something other people don't do. So I think uh, that is actually a challenge I have been taking on. Look at this uh, uh, image, two men facing each other, but but from a totally different angle, uh, uh, we can also envision such a vase. Uh, again, uh, this shows uh, the utility of the space. So nothingness, yes, nothing, empty. However, even for a small uh, spore, uh, iron uh, molecules uh, uh, can be utilized and can be given a certain function uh, in such a space. And this gives rise to a new chemistry. Uh, by separating a space by something, we can uh, give a function uh, interior to this uh, small space. And exactly that's what we have been doing as a material scientist. Uh, thus, uh, we are trying to make uh, many kinds of uh, spaces. Uh, it could be legal or any other word. Uh, uh, it's like a, a using uh, various uh, uh, building blocks. Then as a challenge, we have so many different structures around us in a macroscopic world, but can we replicate them, in a sense, in a nanoscopic world? In nanoscopic world, which we can handle on our hands, what can be done? But before that, let's look at our world, macroscopic world. Pillar layer, the structure, can be found with the Parthenon and Angkor Wat. Uh, historical uh, buildings which are still in existence today. What about on a nanometer scale? Uh, do we find anything similar uh, here? Um, uh, ions uh, and molecules can be stored. Can we make such a nano structure? This is what we made, a copper, uh, metallic iron, and uh, organic Molecule. I will not use any technical jargon. Those uh, molecules uh, and ions uh, can be used to make such a pillar layer structure. And this is a cargo ome basket lattice. Can we make such a structure on a nanoscale using those materials? We can uh, uh, 
make such a green crystals naturally they have such a kagome lattice structure this is a, um, a rock salt structure easy to understand and they can also be made on a nano scale and also by changing uh, the size of the unit we can make them larger and this is diamond structure uh, carbon atoms are connected in such a way can we make this um, uh, uh, by using uh, metallic ions and organic molecules? We can once again uh, make such a um, structure. What about honeycomb structure? Yes. Uh, this is something we also made, a copper ion and those uh, uh, organic molecules are linked together uh, for making such a orderly uh, structure. So we can design molecules and we can uh, design even a structure on a nanoscale. So this has been a challenge, but we can make it a reality and we can uh, produce something on a nanoscale according to our designs. So can we actually make it, uh, this is a rock salt structure, this is what you want to make? What you imagine you brain and see it is pain taking but in the nanoscale uh, you need infinite time in order to make something as big as uh, visible to our eyes so I throw out components then it's made automatically is there a mechanism that enable this kind of making yes the key is the use of coordination bond. Metallic ions and the organic uh, the molecules are connected as if we are using glue to get 3D structure. And uh, we call it metal uh, complex. Then using this, that according to the design, the metallic ions and the organic molecules uh, get connected based on the information given according to the design. It's not done uh, the spontaneously. We give design to those components and the metallic ion and the, uh, the organic compounds make nanoscale connection or bonding. As we make it larger, we can make it to the macro scale and now we can call it a crystal. But this crystal the micrometer size, not visible to our eyes, but if you have a, uh, the, the lens, you can see it. But the, what is the situation, the micrometer level crystal, one micrometer, by using our method, we can clearly show you the structure we can make. This is very orderly arranged. One micrometer. Uh, there are 1,000 because each size of the pore is one nanometer. So, and 1,000 by 1,000 means one million channels in a, a completely orderly manner. And then when molecules come in, uh, this is CO2. This is what we are coding uh, the PCP porous uh, coordination polymers or more metal organic frameworks and designing metal ions, organic li ligands, uh, we can create structures according to our design. To make it easier for you to understand, I would like to talk about the benefits of the small nanometer size pores. This is, there are the, the four panel of the one square uh, centimeters and the surface area is four s square centimeters. One micrometer uh, channel, uh, we can get 400 square centimeters. What about 0.8 by 0.8 square nanometers? Then the surface area is 200, 200 square meters. Uh, square meters, not centimeters. Why 0.8 by 0.8? Uh, methane. Uh, four of them can be contained in the pore because the size of each methane is 0.4 nanometer. So we can get 150 is uh, the, uh, the cubic centimeters. Isn't it like the a kind of hotel where which can accommodate so many guests every night? Zeolite, activated carbon, 
zeolite would have the surface area of 500 square meters per gram like a basketball court. A carbon material is about half, but the, we can get a surface area that can cover the, the, the football or a stadium completely. And uh, what is the effect of the small pores? The, uh, this interaction may be weak, and if you have two, this is a sandbag, but if you have four uh, plates, you can trap uh, the, the molecule uh, quite easily. But can we synthesize them quite easily? These are the solution of the metal ions, and this is uh, the organic ligand solution. You put it. This is a real time, not a first uh, the one, and you already made it. And then you need to filtrate, and that's all. Yesterday, uh, the, the experts on the humanities, e even they can make it. And uh, you would not need scientists like us because the making it is so easy. Easier way is to uh, use uh, the motor for grinding for 10 minutes. It may be too uh, hard for your uh, hand, then you can use uh, the, uh, the metal ball for shaking. Uh, MOF Technology is a company uh, which uh, discloses uh, this technique. We also use the same methodology. A short time shaking will be same as grinding with a motor. Or microwave, since this is possible, you need only one minute. Or well, the interesting way is the spraying. Uh, spraying metal ion, organic ligand alternatively on a or you can get uh, the shining crystals. Because it, it, it's so easy to synthesize, we have more than 7,000 uh, reports per year. So it's a very competitive field. But are they stable? Think about the macro scale. You may think that the stone is very sturdy, uh, organic is OK. The wooden, it may be OK. But what about paper? Cardboard houses should be very uh, the unstable. But this is only in the macro scale. In organic and the art uh, level, if we take in and out the CO2 for 600,000 times, there would be no changes uh, to the performance. Uh, they are heat, water, acid, alkaline resistance. So they are very stable. Then what functions do they have? Separation, storage, and conversion. What about storage? A function of storing um, such a material Uh, is uh, made of a lot of pores, uh, uh, made of uh, metallic ions and organic molecules. Uh, uh, this cylinder contains uh, our material, MOF, and the other doesn't. Uh, then we introduce CO2s in these two cylinders, the same pressure, 5 bar. Uh, those small cylinders, this one, has a uh, doesn't have a, a porous material, uh, and the other one has, and under the same pressure. Uh, and then we open up uh, and uh, try to open up this a uh, to achieve uh, atomic pressure. When we open this one up, uh, this is now a reading one a bar, and this goes to this balloon only that much. What about this one, which includes absorbent, our porous material? Again, uh, gradually, the pressure comes down, and uh, the uh, gas is introduced into the balloon. Of course, it depends upon this equipment performance, but in, in comparison to the control, you are able to compress the gas a great deal. And then what about CO2? Ten years ago, already, at five bar, with one gram, uh, over 6% uh, of CO2 can be stored. Uh, at the 50 bar, 70% of CO2 can be obtained. Uh, in a certain material. 
uh, suppose that there are empty cylinders uh, and uh, this material can store uh, CO2 nine times that of uh, containing nine cylinders. And so in uh, terms of storage, this um, material has the best potential for storing. Now what about methane? Uh, 20 years ago, uh, Nationwide Newspaper released this uh, data, a methane distribution in atmosphere. Uh, red indicates the higher concentration of uh, methane, which is a greenhouse gas, but it also is a fuel for us. Uh, 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 over Japan, uh, not high concentration, but in Europe, in the Middle East, in North America, methane concentration in the atmosphere is high. Uh, and in order to have an onboard methane cylinder on a vehicle, um, 235 square centimeters per s is uh, required uh, to drive a car between Tokyo and Osaka. But we have a better uh, material today for storing a methane. And the BASF, a German company, is already uh, realizing such a cylinder on board. And we decided to look at a more dangerous gas, such as acetylene. Acetylene can be a source of many materials and things, and uh, this one exploded. A serious accident, indeed. And uh, thus, the car uh, is uh, completely destroyed by this explosion. However, uh, using our material, we were able to handle this acetylene more easily. Usually acetylene, which is useful industrially, um, explodes at the two bar under room temperature. Uh, this is the pill layer structure we used to store acetylene more uh, safely. That is the crystal. Uh, this is a pressure uh, uh, by uh, atmount absorbed. Um, the structure uh, is very similar uh, between acetylene and CO2, but only CO2, uh, acetylene uh, can be absorbed because of this structure. As you can see at the cross-section of the pore, uh, there are a double um, hydrogen bond. Uh, the hydrogen bond, which can be seen in the water. So double hydrogen bond uh, was used uh, to pin down acetylene. So because of this uh, bonding, they cannot react so easily. As a result, uh, we are able to achieve the concentration 200 times uh, the uh, lower explosion limit of acetylene. Uh, when they come near, uh, they tend to explode. Um, so under the pressure, they get closer. And that happens at only two bar. And so pure storage of uh, acetylene uh, couldn't be achieved when that is beyond the two bar. However, in the case of porous material, acetylene can be stored in such a very orderly manner. So be it such a dangerous gas, we are able to store them uh, more safely in such a porous material. Uh, this is uh, made by a Northeastern group. Uh, this is their startup company, a spin-out company. Uh, in electronics industry, uh, such a dopant gas, a dangerous gas is uh, necessary. See or arsenic gas, and uh, they have a uh, technology uh, to store them uh, in large amount in a very safe manner. It's already uh, in the marketplace. Uh, other than uh, those examples, there are so many uh, startup companies uh, who are making such uh, porous materials. Uh, they are very easy to produce, as a matter of fact. Uh, that's why there are so many spin-out companies today. Now, what about separation? Uh, this shows the energy consumption breakdown of different industries in Japan. Chemical industry account for 34 percent of energy consumed in Japan, and 40 percent of it is spent on some sort of distillation or separation in a sense. So that means 12 percent of all the energy consumed by industry in Japan is spent on separation. And uh, this is important comment from Nature recently. Uh, that is, around the world, uh, fun operations such as separation and distillation account for 10 to 15 percent of the global energy consumption, exactly the same level as we find in Japan. And uh, if uh, this problem is resolved, uh, then in the case of the United States, they can save uh, 100 uh, million tons of CO2 uh, and uh, 44 billion dollar energy saving. Uh, and uh, uh, all of those 
uh, about gases. And so gas separation is indeed a very important issue for us to resolve. So we decided to take on this difficult challenge. Uh, those uh, indicate the size and the boiling point of different gases. Uh, size means uh, the size, uh, and also uh, the uh, uh, and the boiling point means uh, the uh, uh, interaction. CO2 and methane, uh, those are uh, the components of natural gases. They are far apart, and they have different size and uh, different boiling points, and they are easy to separate. Acetylene and CO2. Uh, that I mentioned earlier, and ethylene and uh, xenon and argon and oxygen and CO and nitrogen, they are very similar to each other and really difficult to separate them. It requires enormous amount of energy to do so. But if you look at the mixture of gases, uh, they are coming out of the chimneys and also in air, uh, uh, we might want to separate oxygen out of air. So there are so many gas separation operations we would like to uh, perform more easily, effectively around the world. Uh, this is a conventional guideline. We looked at the size and the shape. If the pores are too large, it cannot be recognized. If it gets large, uh, smaller, the interaction with the target occurs. This is a conventional way of thinking. Looking back the history, activated carbon has many different size of uh, pores. So uh, that's why it was uh, widely used. And the zeolite has more a regular uh, size uh, of the pore. And uh, it, it, it may fit certain targets, but not others. Now we need to develop new kinds of porous material. What is it? The issue is, or key is, that the, uh, it can respond to the target gas molecules using uh, the metallic ion and organic uh, the molecules. This is our material, meaning So size can also be changed according to the target. And this is what we call the soft porous crystal. This is a crystal, but it also works like a sponge. And something quite interesting can be achieved. We have myoglobin in the muscle for the storage of the, uh, the oxygen. Hemoglobin is there uh, to transport. And myoglobin uh, is made up of only one molecule of protein. This is how uh, the oxygen is applied with the pressure. And the hemoglobin is uh, tetramer. There is interaction among four of them, four proteins. Once uh, the, the incorporation starts, uh, it is uh, the adsorption uh, accelerate. This is what we can do. Uh, this is a good hint. This is a toy. As you can see, uh, the, the whole changes its shape, but no changes to the components, only the changes in the angles. So what we want to do is to do it in the nanoscale. Different ideas are possible. Uh, stacked layers uh, with mutual or the dislocation gives you softness. With hinge, you can make it flexible. Or the interpenetration may also be a, a way to achieve mutual dislocation. And this is one of the things we developed. This is interdigitated structure. By opening it, you can create uh, spaces. What could we do with this material? At the room temperature, CO2, CH2, or O2, and N2, uh, at the different pressure, we could uh, open gates differently. By applying pressure, a gate open for a certain type of gas, at the different level uh, of uh, the pressure, uh, when it's lower, the gate closes. So with pressure, it expands. The most difficult material is carbon monoxide, CO. And uh, there is a carbon inside. And carbon is a very useful material uh, for anything that we could use. But the CO, once it's uh, exhausted into air, uh, it's impossible to be separated from nitrogen from the air. But it has many use if we can separate it. What about activated carbon with pressure? 
and CO and N2 would have the same level of adsorption. So it's impossible to separate between the two gases. And our material with cargo structure, we wanted to separate these two different gases. And uh, this comes as a very beautiful green crystal uh, using uh, the copper and the e organic molecules. Then you can see that the N2 adsorption, but the, uh, the adsorption of CO dramatically increased with the pressure. Why is it? We analyzed the mechanism, and uh, I will show you the essence of the mechanism with a movie. These are the channels in the structure, and this is a copper ion, and uh, CO is bonding, and, and so cannot, nitrogen cannot bond. And when there is a bonding with a CO, then the, the next gate opens, and uh, this CO comes into the next space. This one is already crowded, and N2 uh, even cannot come in. Only CO is allowed to come in, so this is a way to accelerate the absorption of CO. So this material only recognizes CO but does not recognize nitrogen. Starting with 13% of concentration CO in a mixed gas, after three repeats, uh, the, the concentration increased more than 95%. Storage and the separation are now possible. But what about conversion? We need work more for conversion. But what is the future that can use more effectively conversion? This is by Dr. Ola, and he wrote a book uh, titled The Methanol Economy. CO2 in the atmosphere uh, uh, can be taken in using uh, the, the hydrogen from the water and the renewable energy uh, methanol can be generated. And the methanol, uh, are the basis for various uh, fuel and the chemicals. Once they are burned, they go back to the atmosphere. But by repeating the same process, you can capture the material again. Uh, so this is a dreamlike society in the future. And uh, biogas has uh, the concentration of CO2 50%, but it's only 400 ppm in terms of CO2 concentration. But by using uh, the porous material, we would enable direct capture and separation of CO2s. And the catalysts are widely developed, and by joining them with uh, the catalyst, we can realize direct capture and separation. If it becomes possible, currently we use petroleum and coal as a raw material for the synthesis of the petrochemical. By switching to the natural gas system, separation, storage, and conversion will enable the use the, uh, the ubiquitous resources. Without changing the upstream, in the future, we will be able to use even the air and the biogas as resources. And that would make contribution to the peace, because today uh, the nationalism is the cause of conflict because the resources are limited. But the air uh, is limitless. You can find water anywhere, and air and water can be the can be resources for the new kind of society. But to make it happen, for the uh, the separation of storage and also for the conversion by using the catalyst, integration is necessary in order to use energy effectively and convert it using catalyst. And the hydrogen uh, will be generated or taken out. Integration of different functions uh, should be possible by designing innovative materials in the future. This is my dream, using the porous materials in nano size. Then 
we can put it in our body, then materials would generate uh, the reaction to turn toxic material to intoxic or the amine are uh, very bad for uh, the liver. And by putting these material in the body, we would have a mechanism to turn uh, the toxic material into the useful materials. I've talked about the science technology of gases, environment, energy, and natural uh, resources. I did not have time to talk about the impact of gases on life, but we will be able to handle different aspects uh, freely. This is a kind of chemistry we would like to develop uh, to make it happen. We want to utilize engineering to give new perspective to our future. I work at uh, the Kyoto University Institute, and uh, we are developing advanced porous material to make a contribution to the society. And uh, we are studying at ISEMS. Please visit our homepage if you feel interested. What are the, the objective for a scientist or researcher? Scientists, you may think that we live in a silo, but we are working toward the three discovery. Discovery can be done by everybody because you can enjoy making a discovery, but you want to make a discovery that can affect not only your field, but other fields. You are going to have a sense of wonder. But if you want to make a benefit to the wider society, then you feel passion, discovery, wonder, and passion are the, the direction of, of our researches. So you may think that the the, the mountain immortal with a, a live on air and moisture vapor. And uh, usually you talk about those mountain wizards as an example of something uh, impossible. But the, the, the air and the moisture vapors and the, the the carbon and oxygen and the nitrogen are all included in the air and the moisture vapor in the atmosphere. So we have material for the food and the fuel. So it may become possible to live on the fog because it contains all the necessary elements if we have the capability to use it by way of innovative porous material that we are developing. Thank you very much for your kind attention.